Guys, so when you are trying to solve different problems, really what you're like is you're like a doctor and you're able to read graphs and you're able to understand what kind of environment you are in. So here we have, and then you're able to solve the problem, right? So if you have a collision, say now you're given this kind of diagram, this kind of velocity time graph, and you have cart one, cart two, and you can see they collide, and uh, after the collision, their velocities change. Well, one of the first things you can go and do is you can see, well, what is my change in speed before, and what's my change in, not change, not change, sorry, okay? What is my relative speed before, and what is my relative speed after the collision? My relative speed before the collision looks to me to be something like 0.35 or something. I don't know. And after the collision, uh, these graphs are so difficult to read. Anyway, if you do it, okay, you will see that the relative speeds before and after are the same. So what does that tell us? It tells us that we have an elastic collision. If we have an elastic collision, what does that tell us? It tells us that K1 equals K2, meaning the half mv squared of cart 1 plus half mv squared of cart 2 initial is equal to half mv, half mv squared of cart 1 plus half mv squared of cart 2 final. Okay? So these are all the things that we need to just immediately be able to diagnose. We know what environment we're in. We know what the type of collision is. So we know, oh, and what else do we know with any interaction, with any collision? Wow, momentum is conserved. So that is our, that is our one tool. Here's another tool. Okay, so let's look at this example here. Is the collision in 423, this is 423, elastic, inelastic, or totally inelastic? It is elastic. How can you tell? If you measure the relative speeds, you'll see that they're unchanged. 0.34 before, 0.34 after. Go and do this example 5.2. Relative speeds before and after are the same. It's an elastic. Okay, collision. B, verify your answer by comparing the initial kinetic energy with the final kinetic energy. So, what are we meant to get if it's an elastic collision? We're meant to get K1 equals K2. All right, so, what is K1? Well, we know that cart 1 is the velocity 0, so K1 is equal to half mv squared of cart 2. That's what we have. So, Kinetic energy of cart 1 is 0. Kinetic energy of cart 2 is that, 0 0.0069. So zero, that plus that gives us that. So that's our initial. And because it's an elastic collision, we are expecting the kinetic energy, total kinetic energy after collision to be the same. And if you go and work that out, you get the kinetic energy afterwards is the same. So this is an elastic collision. Okay. I think we're getting the idea. Cheers.